that the people who are listening, there's quite a few people listening right now, that how many people have actually thought about monetizing your blog? And how do you create a really great blog? Are you satisfied with what you're doing? Hey everybody, it's Norm Ferrar, a.k.a. The Beard Guy, and welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. In this uh, episode, we're going to be talking about something we really haven't talked too much about, but how to build a six-figure blog for Amazon sellers and to create some passive income. We're also going to tell you about a five-step strategy, three top reasons why businesses fail. I've seen a lot of them do that when they just can't put together a proper blog and uh, how creating a profitable blog can skyrocket your business. So welcome to another Lunch with Norm, the e-commerce and Amazon FBA podcast. All right. Amazon sellers, do you ever consider putting together a blog? Something I've learned in the past that uh, you can do and you can get great search engine results um, and be found in the search engine and be an authority. But so many don't do it. That's one of the things you hear about optimizing your listing. You never hear about optimizing a blog. So today, how to build a six-figure blog for Amazon sellers and passive income. Our guest is a first uh, is a first-time guest and founder and CEO of Blend TW. She is a former TV journalist turned online media entrepreneur. She has decided to quit her job in television and make a change in the media industry by launching a website focused in grass, grassroots journalism. That's how Blend Blend the World was born. And today, our first time guest is Cielo Solis. I hope I said that right. Anyways, let's have a word from our sponsor and uh, take it away, Kels. I want to give a quick shout out to an incredible group of sponsors to help keep this podcast running. The Lunch with Norm podcast would not be possible without the support of the following sponsors. Post Purchase Pro, Clear Ads, Jeff Schick Law, Rebate.com, Honu Worldwide, Digital Blacksmiths, Netfluence, Extreme Power, and Startup Club. Now back to the show. Welcome our first time guest. Hi, how are you? Great. Well, this is an awesome topic. So I hope we get a lot of people listening to this because not enough is said or not enough credit is given to blogs and the authority it gives you, you know, it, it's, it is, it really is the juice for uh, the internet, right? Knowledge, education, and yeah. that is Google. Yeah. And you know, what's the irony is that I don't have an Amazon store, but I made so much money on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I just spend a lot of money on Amazon. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we just talk, first of all, um, the importance of a blog. Hmm. So why should any Amazon, I can speak as an Amazon seller. And if I look at it, it, it doesn't make sense for me to go, okay, I'm spending this time building the listing. I've got a little website going, a one pager, do some social media. Are you telling me I've got to put a blog up now? Why is that important? I mean, there's so many reasons, right? Um, and I can tell you a couple ones. Um, the first one is just increasing your brand awareness and credibility when you have a blog. And let me be clear, a blog that actually has traffic, right? Because you, have, you can have a blog and have two people on that website and that will never do anything to your business. But if you have a blog that has, I don't know, anything, I mean, in the conservative side, 50,000 people every month, right? they get familiar with your brand, um, you organically build a loyal fan base. Um, mm -hmm. And when you do that, right, selling anything, a course, a product, it just becomes something so natural and organic. Um, it's probably, I feel like having a blog um, that is actually generating traffic, it's one of the most consistent ways to get um, organic warm leads to your listings or to anything that you're selling on your website. And the best one is that you actually create new streams of passive income. I mean, 
my first publication, which is now worth about $1 million, I started that from zero and I was able to scale it up through producing good content um, and over a period of 12 months. And I've created seven streams of passive income from that website. One of them is Amazon Associates. Um, so we monetize by promoting affiliate marketing that definitely creating these streams of income um, through affiliate marketing and online advertising. Um, so it not only will increase your sales, but you're creating all these streams, all these new streams, passive income that is going to bring you more money. And more importantly, people don't know that websites, blogs are liquid assets, which you can sell for a lot of money into the market, right? There's a formula right. we have in our space um, is usually your monthly income multiplied by three or uh, I'm sorry, monthly income multiplied by 35 or yearly income multiplied by three. And, and there is websites such as Empire Flippers where you can buy and sell websites every day. So I've actually I actually sold already two websites and I keep my big one. I don't know what I'm going to sell it. Um, but yeah, it's extremely lucrative. So you're working with a lot of your revenue streams are coming through getting a domain or getting an existing domain, um, writing great content and yeah. driving traffic there. The mm. traffic is found you and you're pro promoting Amazon uh, associate links. Yeah. Is that correct? Yeah. Exactly. So that is, that is important. I'm, um, I, I don't know, uh, you, I don't know if the listeners know this, but, uh, I'm, I've played around and dabbled in domains for many, 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 many years. Uh, in fact, my domains used to be free when I first bought them. That's how old they are at <laughs> one word domains. Um, but, uh, anyways, I've got about 2000 domains and that's exactly, exactly what we do is we try to create content, mm -hmm. put them on, and we build out these affiliate links. Now, for an Amazon seller, think about it this way too. You can create something. Let's just take a bully stick. And let's say you have XYZ bully stick. And you uh, write articles about natural grass-fed bully sticks, odorless bully sticks, the difference between the two, difference between rawhide and uh, a bully stick. Anyways, you get all this really great content up and not a hundred words or so, but like a good quality blog article. And then from that, you put your product and now you're, you're reviewing five or 10, you know, other products with your Amazon uh, uh, associate link there. But of course your review for your product is outstanding. You know, it's 4.95 compared to the next guy, which is 4.5, which is compared oh. to the next person. So that's also something that you can do. And by the way, um, you can also take that information and put it on a related video in your uh, video carousel on, on Amazon. So um, yeah. as long as you don't badmouth your competitor, but um, anyways, I, it's just really cool because I didn't know we were going down that lane. And uh, I love that side of what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, it's it's great. Um, but I have to say one thing, Bob, because um, I, I, I work with so many entrepreneurs these days. 80% um, of entrepreneurs that come to me, they already have a blog, um, but they have no idea how SEO content marketing strategy works. Um, and I have to say that 50% of the success factor when it comes to starting a blog, even starting your domain is you have to understand if you can actually compete on your niche. And that's where probably 80% of people make that mistake because they open a blog thinking, well, I'm going to talk about this topic. Well, have you done research? Do you know that if you actually launch your blog, you're going to be competitive? There is actually for you, right, a space to compete and be able to monetize and make a lot of money. That Let's is, talk about that. Yeah. So the research, mm. we've got a bunch of listeners that are listening to this. Yeah. How do they go about researching whether they're in the right space or not for the blog? Absolutely. So I have a formula actually that I've developed over the years, but choosing a niche is basically the most important factor. If you don't do that right, it doesn't matter how much you optimize keywords in order to rank, you're never going to be able to build a six figure asset, which is what I basically um, I've done, you know, all like what for about five different websites that I own. Um, but the ideal niche has about three to five competitors with a domain authority less than 40. Now, I don't know if 
your audience knows about domain authority, but Google basically assigns a score to every website in the world. And it's from one to a hundred. The closest you are to a hundred basically means that in the eyes of Google, you are an expert and they can trust you and therefore they give you traffic. But an ideal niche has three to five competitors with a domain authority less than 40 ranking on the first page of Google. Things that you have to look at is also making sure that the websites, right, your competitors are being monetized by premium ad networks. Um, there's two ad networks in my space. One of them is called AdThrive. The other one is called Mediabind. And they're really the gold standard because every blogger wants to get into one of these ad networks. Once you get in, it's really hard, but once you get in, um, you basically start making real money, right? I mean, I remember when I started my first blog, I got into AdThrive. Uh, minimum requirement to get into AdThrive is about 100,000 sessions, 100,000 sessions per, per month. I started making... $5,000, you know, just on ad net, on ads, advertising. So that was crazy to me. Um, so making sure that your competitors actually are monetized by these big ad networks. Second, looking at the content, right? You want to make sure that 40% of the content of your competitors are on the free speech of Google. Third, making sure also the website, the content and website is not too heavy, because if it's too heavy, then, you know, that will mean that you will need to write a lot of content in order to be able to rank them or to be able to be competitive on this space. And then for making sure also that the expertise is not too high, right? Because what happens is that if you take a blog and you are looking at a blog as a business, which is the goal to build a six-figure asset, then you're going to probably have to outsource the writing. So sometimes you're trying to hit a niche that you need someone with a really high expertise that means equals a lot of money and also it's just harder for you to find writers but those are kind of the steps that you have to follow in order for you to identify right and see if you can actually have the potential to be competitive in this space you know and we're going to get into this in a second but um we had uh traffic ninjas on uh, and they uh, just before the podcast, we're looking at one of my brands. Uh, they knew one of my brands and it was just launched. And they said, what are you doing? And it just launched. And mm -hmm. we already had organic traffic of just tons of traffic coming to the blogs. Okay. And luckily, the reason, uh, luckily we had them on because they looked at the blogs and they said, you're missing out. Uh, the blogs are well-written, but you don't have that call to action or you don't passively mention where to go. And so what's happening is you're getting lots of visitors, but you're getting no sales. And so I know that you, you've got your content blog, but like for, for a seller, Amazon seller, you might have a really great quality blog article or a blog, but you're not forming it right, or you're not creating the right atmosphere. Hmm. People are going and saying, thank you. This is great. <laughs> you know, you get lots of traffic, but you're not getting any sales. And I think uh, if I interpret what you're saying is that you can basically do two types of revenue streams here. You've got the one with great content coming in, which could generate fun, uh, money. And if it's, especially if it's for me anyways, if you've got that, um, that direction, that call to action to get them over to your products, mm -hmm. that could be a secondary source. Would, would, would you agree with that? Yeah. I mean, th this is the thing, right? It will, once you have traffic and you start using affiliate marketing links, it will convert into sales, right? Um, but it's beyond that, right? It's you can make money through that. You can make money through online advertising. You can make money through sponsorship. I mean, the first year alone, I made fifty thousand dollars just on sponsorship, meaning brands wanted to work with me um, because I was ranking really high for a specific products and specific keywords. Um, there's so many ways to make um, revenue, right? Email list organically you know I, I don't know if you've always heard like the power is on the email list well right. if you have a website with a hundred thousand people every month and you have a badass lead magnet people organically you know let's say just 10 percent of those people subscribe to your email newsletter every month how many subscribers are you getting in one year right and once you yeah. get 
10,000 subscribers, you can also monetize. You can get a lot of sponsors for your email newsletter. You can sell products. I've seen so many smart people pre-selling their products to their email listing and selling out in hours. They don't even have to list it in Amazon because they're sold out. <laughs> yeah, that's the power of having a very big email list for Blend TW, which is my college publication. Last year, organically, without doing anything, just the traffic that we did in Elite Magnet, we got about 70,000 new subscribers. And we tend to purge our email newsletter every three months because for us, it's college students, right? It's just four years and then they move on to the next thing. But if you have a, if you have a blog that it's focused on evergreen content, right? Content that it's always valuable, then imagine the audience that you could build. I mean, here, the thing is building a loyal fan base, right? And it's very different trying to get to people by running ads that people coming to you because of the value you provide. The more you provide value to them, they're going to become familiar with your brand. So anything that you release, of course, the product, right? They're going to want to consume and probably sell, like buy. So it's it's really, I think, a win-win situation in all cases. Um, yeah. One thing I want to bring up, I, I just saw a comment from uh, Chuck and uh, the use of chat GPT. Now uh, yeah. I don't know about you, but my mailbox and I'm, I'm just going to start deleting them as they come in. But <clears throat> there's uh, all these um, emails that are coming in now that look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. So for people who want to rely on chat GPT, uh, if you're just putting in a question and you don't have a proper prompt, or if you don't know how to best utilize chat GPT, you're going to come out with a very generic um, formula and that's being sent out. It might be worded differently, mm. but as soon as I say, see, I've got you covered. That's chat GPT. Like I just know that phrase is coming from chat GPT. I've never seen it for years and all of a sudden in every email I'm getting, I've got you covered. And these are things that uh, can really destroy you too. Yeah. Um, if you're, if you understand prompts or prompt engineering, that's great. And take a course, learn it. The other thing that you have to know is using chat GPT, Google loves education and knowledge, but using that app, OK, if you go out and you use it and you do not give it credit, you will be penalized. Hmm. So you whenever you write a blog article, you can either put it through a rephraser and then you can publish it. But it, it, it still can be picked up. But anyways, if it's straight chat GPT and you write a book or if you pub publish a blog, well, guess what? You have to put footnote that uh, chat GPT assisted you and you better have paid for it too. So, uh, you know, you have to have, you have to, it's the, the chat GPT, you have to have commercial. So you have to pay for what you're using. So these are a lot of things that people are jumping the gun at right now. I know that wasn't even on one of my topics that I was going to talk to you about today, yeah. but that's the new world. We think that we can just punch it in no pain and, Two seconds later, I've got an article I can publish. What are your thoughts on that? Okay, I'm going to be very stream about it because, you know, I have built blocks over the years and that now are worth a lot of money. And the key factor, you know, this is one factor that I have focused on to build these blocks is content. And mm -hmm. I don't compromise content. Like these days, everyone wants to get a writer on Fiverr, right? And pay the minimum they can and then put content and they think that they're going to rank. No, it's not going to happen. ChatGPT or any artificial intelligence um, tool is great to brainstorm ideas. It's great for outlines, right? It's it's great for even like creating meta descriptions. But if you use those tools to create content, trust me, it will catch up to you. Google, like I think there is a huge debate recently in our industry. It's like how much acceptable is right? You've seen all these big websites using artificial intelligence now to write content. Well, that is why this year they added at E, an extra E on the standard of Google. So Google has this standard, it's called EAT. I don't know if you guys are familiar with, it's, it stands for expertise. 
authority, trust. Those are the guidelines that you have to follow. Your content needs to follow in order for you to rank high organically on the Google algorithm. Well, they just added one more in its right. experience, meaning that it's just not enough to copy and paste some, you know, content and put it on your website. What kind of value you're providing to the user that is entering your website? Is this content actually like experiential, meaning that you're creating experience? It comes down to really when you're trying to build a loyal fan base is this is what happened to me and this is my experience, right? It's all about being genuine and create a rich content that it's very unique. So if you're trying to just have as it and create and, and hire someone that doesn't really know about the topic, that's really going to hurt you because we use chat GPT is great. Artificial mm -hmm. is great. I have a team of writers. They use it to brainstorm outlines but we never use it to create content now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So anyways, the for, for anybody who's looking just to punch it in, you know, just be careful. Uh, I know Chuck just put in uh, prompts.chat. There's lots of uh, uh, options out there. But take a course. And if you don't understand what a prompt is, they're very simple to understand. Make sure you write it properly. Uh, you know, refer, the very simple thing is refer to what type of writer is writing this for you. That's one of the things that you can do. So um, I'm taking a great, I'm taking, I've taken three courses hmm. and I've taken a really great course right now from Digital Marketer. Um, so uh, I take it twice, twice a week and they, you know, they give you their homework, but it, it's very, very, uh, it's very good tells you exactly what you can do, what you should not do, and what you should never do. So um, let's just put that out there. So we're already at the bottom of the hour. Uh, so let's talk about this. If the listeners have, oops, just a sec, this is very important, coffee time. Thank you. My wife is awesome. She's giving me coffee. I'm getting coffee too. There we go. Coffee, uh, yay. <laughs> So uh, at the bottom of the hour, if you're a first time listener, we have something at the top of the hour called Wheel of Kelsey. So anybody who's interested in, in this giveaway, it's hashtag Wheel of Kelsey, tag two people and you'll get a second entry. Now, what is the entry? We got, well, actually, we have two things today. One is for anybody who's listening and the other one is for one special um, person. So why don't you say what we've got? Oops, did you hang? Oh, oh, oh this is over to you, Celio. <laughs> yes, we have two amazing things. Sorry. <laughs> the first one is um, I'm just giving everyone a 15 minute free discovery call. If you're serious about, you know, creating a blog and actually making money with it, not only to increase your Amazon sales, but to generate new streams of income, you can definitely book that. Um, I think Kelsey is going to drop the link. And then for one person today, I am giving them a 45 minute one on one coaching. Um, so that, that's the big prize. That's a huge prize. So I can, I can, I, I don't know. I'll go on a limb here and I can say, I can guarantee that the people who are listening, there's quite a few people listening right now, that how many people have actually thought about monetizing your blog? And how do you create a really great blog? Are you satisfied with what you're doing? Howard, you've got these products here that you dumped so much information over the, the, the two Amazon lives we've done. That would be great. Why is your product so different than commercial products, right? I look at Marsha with her, uh, her Stay Well Copper. That's huge for this. There's so many people listening right now that could use a blog and can do an excellent job with this because you're excellent and you're passionate about what you're doing. Let us know in the comments. Do you have a blog? Do you not have a blog? Are you satisfied with your blog? Comment about your blog. Anyways, and continue with the questions. We've got a bunch of questions already, but Kels, let's go to a uh, sponsor and then we'll come right back. I want to thank Jeff Schick Legal for sponsoring this episode of Lunch with Norm. You've probably heard on the podcast about Amazon suspensions. They're very real. It can happen at any time. And when it does happen, how do you get out of it? 
how does the little guy like you and me get out of these suspensions without paying an arm and a leg in legal fees? This is where Jeff Schick Legal is here to help. For a very low monthly retainer, for only $89, get access to Amazon attorney Jeff Schick. That's right. You can sit back, relax, enjoy that cup of coffee while listening to the Lunch with Norm podcast, knowing that you have an advocate and a partner in your business success. But wait, just mention Lunch with Norm and receive 50% off the first two months. Get the protection you need and visit jeffschick.com today. That's J-E-F-F-S-C-H-I-C-K.com. Now let's get back to the show. And Jeff Schick is awesome. If you're listening, Jeff, you got a great service out there. And by the way, Chuck, congratulations. Um, I saw that you finally... Finally, have your product in store, so that or in stock. So, congrats on that. That's a that's a big uh, milestone to achieve. So uh, now we'll get some sales going for you. All right. So now let's talk about. Let's kind of get back on track. I, I've gone down too many rabbit holes today, but they've been really good. Yeah. 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 They, these are things that are happening right now as, you know, as the world turns, mm -hmm. uh, as the soap opera. Well, I don't even know if that's still on, but anyway, my mom used to watch it a lot, but let's talk about your five-step formula to build a six figure blog. Yeah, absolutely. So the first one is we talk about it, right? You have to do that niche research and that is 50% of your success factor. That's the step one. Once you've identified your niche, the second thing you have to do is you have to create an SEO content calendar. This is probably the second reason why people just give up, right? If you don't have a content calendar for at least six months and you just open a blog, you're going to burn out really quickly, especially if you're a solo entrepreneur and you have a small team. Creating a lucrative blog takes time, okay? Google's not going to trust you right away. It takes time. It takes about eight to 12 months for you to start ranking on the algorithm. So you got to make sure to create a content calendar once you've identified your niche to make your life easier. Number three. Uh, excuse, excuse me for one sec. So is that similar? It's completely different than a social media calendar, but very similar in a way that all you know is that you've got the blog ready to go at this certain time point. Yeah. You need to have it for it. You need to create a content calendar for six to eight months. And right. obviously, then it depends. Some people, for example, I now work with agencies, with amazing agencies to do the writing. Um, you can create your own team of writers, you know, however, whatever works for you. But they need to follow your content calendar. That's yeah. key, right? If you're trying to get help, if you're doing it all your own, then that's going to keep you on track too. But it's very important to have one. Yes. Okay. So... Now, next step. And step three, picking up your domain. So what I've noticed, especially when people pick up the domains, so let's say you've decided to create a website that is going to be about how to make money online, right? Um, they pick up all these weird domains. Uh, you got to tell Google right away, right? Once they index what your website's got to be about. So you got to make sure to use a keyword in your domain, right? If it's business tips and put that business tips um, and just keep it simple because you want simplicity. Sometimes people try to like create all these really weird names and then it's really hard for people to identify your brand. So that's very important. Step four is making sure you're picking the right elements. I made so many mistakes at the beginning when I really, and I'm not a technical person. I had to learn everything, but picking up the right theme, the right hosting, okay? It's going to be pivotal at the beginning and it's going to hit you so many headaches as you grow. I remember I hit 100K readers and my website broke. And oh. I was, I was, I entered panic mode and I was like, what's going on? And it was because I was using a really bad hosting. <laughs> so yeah, it's small little things that will make such a big difference um, to have, to have them like done at the beginning. And then step five, you got oh, it. One sec. Sorry. I just want to keep this uh, on track with the hosting. What hosting do you use or what hosting would you recommend? Yeah. So there's two that I suggest. Um, Obviously, if you're just starting, I know everyone wants to use Bluehost because it's cheap, but please 
try to use big scoots or WPX. These are the only big two scoots. ones. Big scoots is thirty dollars a month. I think the starting plan, and it's one of the best um, hosting sites, and it's not expensive. They have great customer support. So if you can start with big scoots, it will make a big difference. And I can you know put it on the comments. Um, I don't know how to. Yep, uh, Kelsey's got it up there. there and what was what scoots. was the other one? Amazing. The other one is WPX. Okay. All yes. right. Very good. Really good. Yeah. They're really fast. Um, I still use Vix Goods, you know, and my website, my main one reaches almost about 1 million readers per month. I have the VIP plan, but you know what I mean? Like, it's just such a great posting um, site and it's very cheap compared to other ones. Okay. In the market. Number five. Number five is making sure you have a workflow, okay, to create and publish content. I mean, I've seen people do different things. Some people wait for all the content to be done in order for them to start just pushing, you know, depending on your strategy, how aggressive you want to be. Um, some people, for their sanity, they just want to post four times a week or sometimes four times a month. You need to see what works best for you, but you need to have a workflow, okay, to create and publish content. That is key. To, have, to build a lucrative blog. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's move on. And by the way, is it a hard stop at one? No, I mean, I can, I just have a, I just have a meeting at 2 p.m., that's all. Oh, okay, okay. I just looking at, you know, how many questions we've answered and how many questions there are coming in. Uh, but uh, if we don't get to all the questions today, uh, we will post them into the into the group and hopefully we can get them answered for you. But now let's just move on to um, the three top reasons uh, why businesses fail uh, when they are trying to create a blog. OK, the first one is really they have no clue how SEO works. No clue. Right. Um, and if you have no clue, think of building a website as building a building. Right. If you don't have a strong base, it will fall down. That is exactly the way a blog works. If you don't understand how SEO works, your blog is never going to make you money. Um, second one, they fail to create a consistent SEO content strategy. I'm going to go back and repeat it. you got to create a content calendar. OK. And third one, they're not focused. And this is probably the most important one. They're not focused on producing e-content. At the end of the day, why would Google ever give you traffic, organic traffic? It's because you're providing value for a specific query. And in order to do that, right, that's where you need to invest the money, not in your theme, not in the aesthetics, because some people get so caught up and invest so much money. It takes, what, $30 to just be able to launch a theme on Cadence Pro? Put your big box on the content. That's something you cannot compromise because that is how you build an audience. Um, so yeah, so make sure you produce high quality content that actually is meeting the demands of your readers. I, I've said it so many times about Fiverr. I mean, they have some good people in. They, you know, they have their pro plan, but a lot of the time you go there and you want to have a blog article written and you get it for five, 10 bucks. Yeah. You get a five or ten dollar article. Yeah. Uh, I just paid today. This is one of my writers, by the way. It was very detailed, but it, one was one hundred and fifty five bucks, and the other one was three hundred dollars. But she is incredible at writing blogs, and she gets paid very well. And if you're listening, and I won't say your name, um, you know, thank you for all your hard work. But they're good quality, well researched yeah. blogs. Yeah. Um, all right. So. Now let's just move on uh, to uh, creating. Like, how did how do you create a, a profitable blog that can skyrocket your business? Yeah. So, um, if you're an Amazon seller, you first need to look at the product you're selling, right? And once that, once you have that into account, you have to try to build a niche or something that is closest to your target demographic. From then you again create that content calendar. You start pushing content um, and making sure also you do the keyword research, right? Um, and not just like I'm gonna launch my blog and then then the keyword research and just post content whenever I feel like it. It doesn't work that way, you know. Especially for the first e months, there's like a honeymoon period just away with Amazon, right? In Google, once you've launched the blog, so you gotta make sure this is a months. You need to be consistent. If you're not consistent, then you're not going to get the traffic you want. Um, and I always tell people is 
be smart about you create content. Maybe like, let's say you look at your competitor and they have a badass video, they have a badass poll. Obviously early stages, you're not going to be able maybe to invest in it because you don't have the money, but just create a piece of content, you know, quality content. And once you start ranking and making some money, then you can reinvest that on your website. That's right. what you want to do it, right? Which is why to me, I don't care who you are. Like if you're going to invest in a blog, you have to have a strategy, a strategy, right? And you have to think from day one, I'm creating a blog that I know 10 months from now, I'm going to be able to get into at, at Thrive and Mediavine. You're going to see me talking about those two ad networks because it makes a big difference. You start making real money and then you can invest that money to other things to great lead magnets for your website, right? And kind of focus on building your email list. You can focus on, on creating good quality video content. And the great thing about it too, is that once you become part of a premium ad network, like ad thrive, they actually, they in, like, there's an incentive to create good quality videos because you don't have to wait for YouTube to start making real money. The moment you put your video on your article, right? All these videos already have ads, right? Your 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 ad network, they're the ones that are going to put everything and then you start making money also in videos. So you just got to build, right? Different ways so you can actually start making money and then start building your website and improve it. Yeah. So I always like to uh, manage expectations. And so we've got a lot of people listening and saying, okay, this is good for you. You know how to do this. You you've made a lot of money, but what's reality? Uh, can I really make a hundred thousand k, a hundred thousand k as a liquid ax asset for my business? Is it possible? Absolutely. So, I wish I could show you my screen to to uh, so, so people can understand. You oh, you can. can. You can oh, if if you. Really? Yep. Okay, let me present you. Um. Share screen. I'm just going to share it screen really quickly. Sure. Um, okay. I guess it's this one. Okay. It's the kind of a presentation that I usually have for people, but um, I want people to understand this because this is what they don't get. Blogs have abolition formula. Okay. And this is real. This is like, I'm going to show you even if we're going to go to the website. Let's say tomorrow you take all this time to build a blog, blah, blah, blah. It's giving you some money, you know, and the conservative, right? Let's let's say your blog starts giving you $3,000. Anyone can reach, okay, $3,000 in their blogs, okay? I'm sure you're making more money from Amazon. This is what you can actually do if you want to put into the market. Monthly income multiplied by 36 or yearly income multiplied by 33. So now let's say your blog is making you $3,000 a month and now you want to sell it. How much would that be if you multiply it by 36? Oh, well, it's going to be around 100 grand. Exactly. So this is what I'm talking about. So let's say tomorrow you're tired, you don't want to deal with your blog anymore and you just want to go sell it. Then you go to a website like Empire Flippers and then you list your website. Look at these websites. Look at the pricing, right? This is a website in the finance that it's going for almost $1 million. And this is how they get their valuation, right? What we're talking about, um, sorry, like here, monthly income multiplied by 36 or yearly income multiplied by three. So when I'm talking about six-figure asset, all you have to do is just get your website to about a three to $4,000, right, per month of income. And I'm sure for anyone that is listening and it's basically um, part of this podcast right now, it's doable, right? Look, there is a website in the pet care niche going for seven, 793K. And then some of the monetization is also Amazon FBA. But look at this one. This one is just display advertising, right? Just one stream of income. And it's going for almost half a million dollars. Right. So it's possible. And it's a liquid asset, right? Very separate from your Amazon or the all the other different businesses that you have. So that's what I want people to understand because people think that blog is just a way for you to increase some sales in your Amazon. No, you're building a, like basically a genuine just one business, right? Very separate from your other one. It, it is a liquid asset. So you, you mentioned at the beginning that you're not an Amazon seller, but... <laughs> You made a hundred thousand dollars on Amazon, basically. 
yeah. being is yeah. So let's let's talk about let's talk about that because there's a lot of people that are just starting out and they're trying to figure out how if you're not an Amazon seller, how the heck did you make a hundred thousand dollars in one month? Um, yeah, and that was December because obviously that's the month and people love buying in Amazon. Um, just to keep it like every month is different, but what I'm averaging right now in Amazon is anything. And like a slow month would be anything from three to four K and in a month like December, it can be over a hundred thousand dollars. And I want to be very clear sales, right? I am affiliate. We only get an affiliate marketing percentage, which means we're getting, if it's a hundred K, it probably be like anything from 10 to $12,000. Hey, that's still good money. Cause I don't have any Amazon product, right? What I do is like, I go and promote products of you guys sellers, right? in my website. So it is doable. What happens is that once you have so much traffic in your website, you're providing a lot of value. Like for my, my main niche is in the college space, right? Think about it. You know, I review about the best 10 laptops for 2023, the best college backpacks, and then connecting that to Amazon and other affiliate marketing networks that I use, you can easily make a lot of money just to referral. And it comes down to having a lot of traffic on your website and then that people also trust you. Like I built a brand and a reputation in that specific Gen Z college space. So sometimes we send out, you know, to our email list, which now it's over 100K, any review for to 2023, right? The best gadgets to have for college that majority of them come from our Amazon list. And so it's so easy to convert that into sales. Uh, and, and it's, I'm lucky that you clarify that. And that is so important. Top line versus bottom line, you know, so we're talking gross sales over net sales, uh, but still it's great. So 100,000, because it was an affiliate uh, commission, you're getting three, 4% and $12,000 in, in as just passive income. Yeah. And I want to share it. It's somewhere in here. Yep. Like I have this presentation. You can find it. Oh, hold on, let me. Sure. So for those of us on an actual podcast, not watching this with uh, through YouTube, um, Here. we're just going to go and check this these sales out as an associate. I don't know if you guys see this. This is yep. this was December. One hundred thirty-two thousand. Two years ago. So yeah, this is two years ago. So yeah, this is just December and pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. I had to say. Yeah. And, and now with the Walmart associate program, uh, that's another one. Lots of traffic going over there as well. And I want also to be um, one thing that I didn't know, actually, my Amazon friend told me I am getting money because I am doing affiliate marketing. My understanding is, which is that's on another reason why I also want to get into the e-commerce space is that you not only get the money from your product, but you're also getting commission for being an influencer. So that's double income there. Yeah. Once you become an influencer, that's correct. Yep. That's so really you get cool. paid. I didn't, I didn't know that. So, yeah. All right. Well, we have a bunch of questions. Why don't we get to those? Yeah. All right. So let me just pull up. Okay. From Claudia, uh, the guy at Profitable Pineapple, uh, Travis Sigler, says to write a blog and drive traffic to the blog with Google ads. And he says he gets a lot of sales through the links to his landing page and the blog then to Amazon with a brand referral bonus link to get the 10% back from Amazon. Does this sound like a good idea to you and Norm, to you, Norm and Cielo? Um, so I'm going to be really honest. I don't believe in paid marketing. I mean, I know that it's great sometimes for landing pages and many different things, but everything that I've done, it's organically. And I believe in long-term, that's what you want to do. Because with Google ads or paid ads you're forcing people to come to your website so they don't really know you and in my convert i don't know I, I you know but i just that's not something that i can really have an assessment because i've never done it yeah right so um pi uh profitable pineapple is travis ziggler he's been on uh before and uh he has different strategies and they do work so uh, you can try it out. Uh, everybody's a little bit different. Just like when you're launching an Amazon product, you'll hear 10 different ways to do it. 
So you can all, you can dabble in it. I'm sure it, it, it would work. It makes sense because um, you're getting the 10% back on your brand referral program uh, from the brand referral program. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, next one is from Chuck. Uh, I was posting my blogs on my Shopify store. Is there any reason not to do this? Oh yeah, no, you're confusing Google. Google doesn't know. Do you have an e-commerce site or do you have a blog? That's another thing that I want to be extremely real about. You cannot have a blog section in your e-commerce space. Mm -mm. Big no. So let me get this straight because uh, the way that we would do it is we would have a blog and we would have affiliate links on the homepage. So the yeah. blog Okay. And then they read the blog and then they would come over to the home page, click on the link. So are, are you saying keep those two things separate? Well, do you want to, do you want Google to see your website as illiquid, you know, just one asset? Think about it. Let's say tomorrow you want to sell your website for seven figures or six figures. If yep. it's attached to your e-commerce space, how are you going to do that? Yeah. I, I mean, that's the way I've always done it. So you're saying that's not a good idea. So my affiliate site, so if I'm writing a blog, there might be a link that goes over to a different site. So you you, you just redirect tra or you're directing oh, traffic yeah. over and to the affiliate site. You have an e-commerce, right? I don't know if you're using Shopify or any website, right? Where you have your e-commerce store. Okay, yeah. just create a tab and that tab will take them directly to your blog to your blog but don't combine them because first of all you're using google google is like okay this is an e-commerce space and you're getting some tracker from your blog but it's just also really messy because i recently had a guy that also had over a hundred thousand unique visitors per month he was using Ezoic um and all these things but he had a really hard time like he would apply to add that I'm good rejected every month and he didn't get it. He was like, I don't understand why I meet the requirement, like the minimum requirement threshold. And it was because he was combining, right? The e-commerce and the blog. And then think about it. If tomorrow you want to sell your blog for a lot of money, it's going to be really hard, right? In terms of valuation, because it's attached to your e-commerce store. Yeah. All right. So I, I, it's my advice just to keep it separate. It, right. It's going to same thing because you're creating a tab um, on your e-commerce site and then in your block, you can create banners and lead magnets and so many different ways that that it will drive people to your e-commerce store, but just keep it separate. Okay. So just have a blog and then a link to whatever your e-commerce store is, Lunch with Norm Deals. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Okay. Uh, next one. Let me see. From Claudia, how many words should the average blog post be so that people will read it all the way through? So, um, like I said, it's like, first of all, you need to look at your competitors. I mean, once you've identified your niche, you will identify right away who are your five main competitors. If the whole point of Google is like, you want to rank, you want to be on the first speech of Google. So, I always say that looking at your competitor and see the workout is a place where you want to start. Now, do you have to stick to that? No, absolutely not, because you are going to provide a whole unique value and probably even is going to be a, a more comprehensive article than your competitor. That's what you're trying to tap into the space. But that's a good way to start, okay? Because that's what I've seen, um, majority of people having a lot of success. Um, yeah. Okay, next. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, probably for you, Norm. Uh, do you have any ChatGPT courses to recommend? Well, the, the one that I think is the best that I've taken so far is uh, the um, ChatGPT Bootcamp, uh, which is very good. That's from Digital Marketer. Um, yeah, I can tell you the other ones that I've taken. Uh, I'm just trying to think of the names. But anyways, I've, I've got one uh, that I took at the very beginning. And very beginning means, what is it, March 15th? Probably uh, towards the uh, end of last month. But uh, I can put a list together. But that one is something I, I'd highly recommend. Even if you just go out, uh, one of the things I do almost daily is I go to YouTube and just see 
uh, what's out there. Like Kelsey and I were just looking at the, uh, the latest uh, chat GPT four um, development uh, site and just seeing what that's up to. But there's lots of people publishing that information right now. Uh, so just take a look. I would say um, YouTube is a really great resource for it. Mm -hmm. um, lots of people are trying to publish it. And then there are all sorts of chat GPT sites out there. Uh, we might have a, we might just have a podcast on that. Uh, you know, what, where to go or, uh, you know, uh, uh, different uh, extensions. Uh, there's so many out there right now and okay. that could take up a full hour. So we're trying to reach out to some of the people involved with ChatGPT and get them onto the podcast. So if we do, it'll be awesome. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, let me see. From Claudia, how many times should you add a link to your listing or landing page in your blog? Does it look pushy if you add your link too many times? I just usually um, try to post it just once. People get it you know you're trying to you know, promote a product or something yeah if you add it way too many times it's it can be really pushy or if you do it do it you know like all the way at the beginning and then at the end there needs to be space um because of, if if not yes it can come out as just being too pushy and you're trying to to sell something <laughs> yeah so is it a raw link are you shortening the link uh, what type of link should you be adding into your blog and second to the question is where at the beginning towards the end in the middle what are your thoughts on that what's best practices so it's hard for me to say to fill it it depends like what you're using like um obviously if you're using amazon associates it will give you the short link and that's what you want to use um i used a couple of um, affiliate marketing, um, programs. So, um, yeah, but I usually try to use, stick to the short link. And like I said, I think it's not a matter. Of, it's more about, you just got to make sure that if you're putting one link and you're promoting one link on your, um, on your one piece of article, what I do is like, I try to make sure that I leave 400 words. There's gotta be a 400 words kind of a space between every link. So people are not seeing the same yeah. Now, if it is a listing, let's say you're doing, you know, 50 best gadgets for 2023, that's different because you're actually creating a listing about it and they expect you to list each um, each product. Right. Um, so that's a different story. But I'm talking about just a regular article um, that you're writing on that you're trying to promote a product. Mm -hmm. Let's just talk about that for a sec. So you just said the 50 best. So th this is something I was talking about a little bit earlier on is that you have the information on the site. Now, would this 50 best be a review site that you're driving a blog article over to the 50 best bully sticks? Yeah, yeah, basically, right? You are okay. you have the 50 Amazon links. That's the good thing about it, right? You're promoting all these different links, yeah. And um, one thing that I highly suggest you to do, invest in Lasso. It's an amazing plugin for when you're trying to do these type of listings, it's also really great with a Google indexing. And, and I think one of the greatest things about Lasso is that let's say your the article, I mean, the products you're promoting are out of stock. It will tell you, you can manage everything in just one dashboard. So, Oh, okay. Lasso. Yeah. Lasso is, is great. Live okay. thing. <laughs> and some of these other affiliate sites that, that we were talking about. So it's not just Amazon. Uh, we we had the CEO of ShareASale on. Uh, you uh, ClickBank. There's all sorts of different things that you can start to um, promote once you're doing this. So it's we're not just talking about Amazon uh, yes. promotions. Yeah, yeah. Because because we we've been talking about Amazon because obviously uh, majority of people here are Amazon sellers. But right. I use ten different affiliate marketing programs. You know, and they all add up. Yeah. That's how I've been able to make over twenty to three. Twenty to thirty thousand dollars just on affiliate marketing every month from one of my sites. It once you know how to use them, obviously you have to make sure that it makes sense to your content. Okay, next question. All right, we keep getting questions in. I, I know CLO, you you do have to get going at some point. So if there's yeah. a, a time that you need to back out. We yeah. totally understand. So why don't we uh, cut off the questions discovery, here? This, and you can always book a, you know, like I, that's why I'm giving everyone a 15 minute discovery call. If you have a question, um, 
we can talk about it and during that discovery call. Good. All right. So maybe just uh, one more and then um, we'll get over to the wheel. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. All right. So let me see from Chuck. Uh, what should I expect to spend monthly to have a successful blog campaign built for me? I just know if I don't have it done for me, I'll never follow through with it. Mm, is it, are you talking about how much money you're going to spend on the content? Are you talking about like hiring someone? Like I, I run a digital marketing agency and we do the strategy, right? We basically do the research for the niche and then the whole content calendar for up to a year. Um, and it includes the master classes. So, so it's, it's different. I don't have a, you know, like, I don't know, like a specific number, but I don't know, like in terms of content, it can be anything from like good, high quality content. Like you were saying, Norman, it, it's about $150 per piece. Let's say you're releasing 16 articles per month if you want to be aggressive and grow your your blog really fast. So make the math, right? 16 yep. multiplied by 150. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, I, I just want to, uh, Brad, I see there's a question there. Why do I always have to spend money to be successful? Oh. Well, <laughs> oh, okay. I'll like, let you go first. <laughs> so let me tell you, I just got featured on Forbes and it sounds all, you know, ran and, you know, people, oh my God, you make all these millions of dollars. Yeah, I probably built now, I have three sites and the three of them are valued over seven figures, but I probably invested over $50,000 each of the sites. So that's what people don't understand. You want to be successful, you have to invest. It's not just going to happen if, you know, because you're trying to build something, you either outsource it, you do it yourself. There's so many ways to be able to uh, to keep your expenses down, but there's always going to be something that you're going to have to give up, either your time, right, or your energy. Um, but that's, that's really how you become successful. And, and just to keep the definition of success here, be basically building different streams of income and, and reaching financial freedom, you constantly have to invest in your education and also on, on growing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times, like I'll, I've been in a variety of new niches all the time, you know, but uh, first of all, uh, I think you have to spend on yourself to understand the niche. If you're getting into it and you're going in completely blind, let's say it's Amazon. Well, there's a lot of pitfalls. So what do you got to do? You got to take a course. Okay, the course do you trust? Okay, you know, there's Freedom Ticket, there's ASM, there's a bunch of them out there. Um, or are you going to go to YouTube because it's free? So usually at that point, um, quality comes with some sort of paid course. Um, mm -hmm. Then you have to grow your network. So you want to make sure that you're in with a mastermind of some sort. Sometimes that's a, a paid service as well then making your mistakes. Uh, okay, then you'll find tools that'll help not make those mistakes. But it it's like anything. Um, you can do, you can absolutely do it on the cheap, but where you'll see scale and automation come in, um, I think is as you grow and as you learn um, different aspects and like all of this automation, other people have spent time learning how to do certain things. It might be writing SOPs. It might be a, a VA. So that's what you've got to put out because now you're leaning on them for their expertise. So absolutely, you can grow this as slow as you want or as fast as you want. Um, you just probably, uh, there's probably some home runs out there, but uh, for the most part, you'll just probably grow um, less. Uh, yeah, just you, you won't grow as fast. So th that's my two cents on that. Yeah. And I have been there just so everyone knows, because sometimes when you become potential mark successful, people it, like I always see success is like an iceberg. People see the tip, but they don't see what you've been through. I was when I quit my job at CNN, I was basically broke. Um, I was trying to make my first website work. I struggled for three years working five different jobs, working 10 hours on a website that was not making me one dime and not understanding why is it that this is not working? And I was so afraid to invest in a course or get coaching from top people because I'm like, what if this, this doesn't pay off, right? What if I don't make money? You need to work on your mindset first because I feel success most of the time, it's really about a mindset. You got to invest in your education. 
now that I look back, it's like, oh my God, I wasted three years. You know, if I would have invested in X, Y, Z course, that would have taken me to the next level so much faster. But it's a process you live and learn. <laughs> yeah. And just a, a last note on that. It's also about building up your network. So uh, oh. I remember 2017 is when I decided to go to my first big paid Amazon conference. Oh. So there was two, one after another. One was the amazing one uh, in Mallorca. And it was 12,000 bucks and plus the airfare and everything. It turned, it turned out to be about 19 grand, but the people that I met there were fantastic. I met the guys from amazing um, who got me in my first speaking gig on, um, on, on Amazon. Uh, Tomer Rabinovich, Dima Kubrick. These are all like really big names. There was a lot of big names. Uh, like we almost all, all of us still keep in touch right after that. It came back. Um, went to uh, Mexico and did the Illuminati. So the Illuminati turned into Helium 10's elite program and met Kevin King, who now, you know, we're very good friends, Manny Coates, all these guys. Now, for those of us that might not be in the Amazon space, those names are just names, but I've added them to my network. I've got a huge network of sellers now that if I have a problem or a possible business relationship with, um, I just have to call up and and there we go. Now we're off into something else. But right off the bat, there's 40 grand I spent um, that you know, I, I really didn't want to spend it, but I pretty much had to. Yeah, <laughs> especially when you're broke. Yeah, I, I put yeah. <laughs> 50,000 people know this. I put $50,000 on my credit card and I pray that this was going to work. Okay, was I scared? So scared. Don't do it. Don't do it though. Anyway, like, do that. You know, like, there's an angel and a little devil, like the devil was sabotaging me. No, don't do it. You're never going to make money. Um, and I was like, no, I'm going to do it. And I was scared, scared, but look at me now. You know, I think it's, you just got to believe in yourself and you just got to keep moving forward. Um, and don't look back, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So <laughs> anyways, that's it. We're here. Let's have the last word from our sponsor. And then You've done it. You'll be out of here. Yay. <laughs> Launching products isn't like it used to be. To successfully launch your product, you need to hit that algorithm from all sides. Driving external sales, boosting social signals, and increasing product listing engagement are fundamental to success. Rebate is the first and only launch platform that delivers across this broad range. Get your product featured on Amazon.live through Rebate's Influencer Program. With this service, your product gets instant exposure to large audiences of shoppers and permanent placement on Amazon Influencer Storefront, which drives perpetual sales. Run a sweepstakes campaign on Rebate and connect with shoppers off Amazon. And lastly, drive external sales with tried and true deals campaigns. Visit Rebate.com today and get started with your 14-day free trial. All right. So how do people get a hold of you or your agency? Yeah. I mean, I think Kelsey, you just shared the link, right? So if you're interested in, you know, learning more about what we can do for you and your blog, I, I have a digital marketing agency where we help entrepreneurs build six figure blocks. That's really our goal. So just make sure you schedule the free discovery call and I'll be uh, happy to answer any of your concerns or questions. Um, second, we're, we're going to give that 45 minute coaching session to someone. That's happening right now. And you've probably never seen the wheel of Kelsey. Kelsey, let's do it. You better turn down your volume. All right, here we go. It's time for the wheel of Kelsey. Okay. Thank awesome you everyone today. for entering today. I'm going to shuffle these up and give this a spin. If you are the this winner, please email one. me k at lunchwithnorm.com and we'll connect you. And Claudia. Ooh. Yay. Claudia you're gets the it. winner. Congrats. I know Here Claudia you go. had 45 minute questions. session. It's going to yeah. be awesome. All right. So Claudia, you know what to do. And I, I saw Claudia had some questions still. Um, so I think that's perfect that she'll be able to ask you directly. So Claudia, email me k at lunchwithnorm.com and uh, congratulations. And anybody who didn't get uh, get to a chance to win, we've got the 15 minute call set up with Celio. You just have to contact her. 
lady, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. This was so much fun. This has been, I'm actually going to probably have a couple of questions for you a bit later on too, because uh, you were just dropping some nuggets today. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. That's the whole point, right? I really try to show up and just kind of like provide as much as value as possible because I do feel sometimes the SEO space is kind of like a misunderstood and, you know, intimidating space for a lot of people. <laughs> so well, we're going to have to lasso you back in for another podcast. So uh, I, I, I can't wait if you're willing to do it. So anyways, thank you so much. And I hope everybody enjoyed our show today. Um, went down a couple of different rabbit holes, but it was all good. Uh, this whole blog, um, the opportunity to create a new revenue stream through a blog network or creating your own successful blog is there. We wanted to show you how to do it. I think we did that. Um, and if you want to talk to Celio, that free 15 minute call is out there for you. So join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at noon Eastern Standard Time. And thanks, everybody. Want more great information? Don't forget to subscribe by clicking here. Also, if you want to check out our latest podcasts, click over here.